Hi. Um, yes, I'm here to speak a little bit about the work that we're doing locally here in Northern Ireland, um, specifically the work that Supporting Communities is doing to address digital exclusion and how we can use learning about technology and learning to use it to contribute to better health and well-being outcomes. Um, so I'm using this fancy new zoom, zooming <laughs> technology today. Just a little bit about supporting communities. First of all, we're an independent charitable organization that champions tenant and community participation by developing groups, supporting active citizenship, and uh, building cohesive communities. Um, we've been doing it for about 35 years. Um, we do things like uh, provide tailored support, advice, information and training to new and existing groups, statutory and voluntary organizations. Um, so that's just a little bit about us. Um, we've kind of recently rebranded. You'll be forgiven if you haven't heard of us. You might know us as SCNI. You might even know us as NITAP if you're going back a good ways. Yeah. Um, you remember that? <laughs> um, but uh, our name has changed over the years, reflecting how the organization is growing and how we're expanding our areas of work. And an important area of work for us now is actually digital inclusion. And this is a topic that I'm personally very interested in, I'm very passionate about. I think it's an essential tool for modern day citizenship and participation. So our approach to digital inclusion, like all of our work, is focused on the needs of the individuals and the communities. I don't think there is a one-size-fits-all solution to digital exclusion, but our experience of working with all sorts of groups, we've come to understand that addressing the barriers to digital participation um, is what happens, has to happen first. Um, we engage with all sorts of groups. Um, we're active with about 500 groups throughout Northern Ireland, so we can ask them. We can find out exactly what is keeping people from being able to use computers, from understanding, from being digitally competent with the internet. And it's not always a completely straightforward answer. Um, there's actually usually a combination of barriers at play. And that's why it's important for us to work in partnership with other groups such as government bodies, private sector companies, social housing landlords, to address all the issues at once in concert. And we have the expertise needed to deliver the training um, at all different levels and we're continually innovating to find new and better solutions to old problems. Um, I'll talk a bit about the work that we've done um, recently. Um, in partnership with uh, Go On NI and the Department of Finance and Personnel. We've been piloting some new models of engagement um, with housing associations, and we're currently developing a new project with the housing executive that looks like it could be really interesting. So just quickly, I'm sure everybody in this room is probably aware of the barriers to digital inclusion, and that includes things like the actual physical connection, not having connection to the internet, not having a computer, the actual monetary cost of affording those things. Um, but more importantly, I think the things that we need to address are the skills, and not just you know, the skills to play Angry Birds or whatever, but the skills to make the most of the internet and to make it of use to you. And what really is behind that a lot of the times is the motivation, the attitude, the interest to get started. A lot of people who have never been online say, sure, why would I want to do that? Um, so our, address, our work tries to address all these issues, um, and as I said, it's that motivation and that attitude that's the one that's kind of the most the problem. So quickly, I won't spend too long on statistics since I only have the, <laughs> the 15 minutes, but um, I think it is important to recognize that we are talking about a significant amount of people in the population still. 23% um, of the UK adult population do not have basic digital skills. And by basic digital skills, as I said, I mean being able to actually manage information, to communicate by email or by video, by social media, being able to purchase goods and services and access support and problem solve online. So again, not, we're not playing Candy Crush. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, whoop, whoop, zooming in, Northern Ireland, <laughs> that number actually goes up. We're not doing so well compared to the rest of the UK. We're at 35% without basic digital skills. There's the rest of the UK. We're doing better than Wales, sorry, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, oops, how did I get back there? Sorry. <coughs> Don't know what that happened. Zoom, zoom. Who is digitally excluded? Right, who makes up these numbers? Who are these people? Um, the digital divide is something that we first recognized over 20 years ago, but the problem hasn't gone away and hasn't died out with the older generation like I think some of us thought it might do. We've chipped away at it here and there, but there remain significant groups that are left out. 
And like other persistent inequalities around social and economic and educational issues, digital exclusion is something that can affect someone throughout their life course. And the problem is actually becoming more acute, not less, because more essential parts of our everyday lives are happening online now, service provision, et cetera. So anybody who's excluded is actually having a bigger problem now. Zoom, there we go. So here are just some of the groups that are most affected. And you can read those um, percentages for yourself. But um, of interest to us, of course, are social housing tenants is a big group. And again, people on lower wages or unemployed, people who are disabled, and older people. Um, there's just another chart. That third bar there shows the uh, breakdown of all the, of all the people in society that don't have basic digital skills. 72% of them are from the lower socioeconomic profile. But as I said, <laughs> um, I firmly believe this is a problem we can solve. Um, it's, it's something that we can do by working together. Due to advances in user-friendly technology and the continual lowering of cost points, digital exclusion has become much easier to address. Um, and in this information age, there's no reason that every member of our society should not have the access and the support to go online. Um, again, there's no one-size-fits-all. Supporting Communities is an organization that believes in delivering the services that people need, where they need them, when they need them. We have developed several models of engagement and a flexible project management style to suit all people. So the zoom in here, here's a little graph showing um, how we've been interacting with government, with housing associations to come together and provide those services. We like to see ourselves as kind of providing that link between the different organizations to actually have an impact on the ground. Um, we have a strong working re relationship with all sorts of different statutory and voluntary organizations throughout Northern Ireland, um, including the housing executive, as I said, housing associations, libraries, and so on. So some of the work that we're doing. Um, a growing area of work for us is around training groups, individuals and trainers throughout Northern Ireland. Um, we've been involved in the Go On NI initiative, which is part of the DFP's Digital Transformation Program. So again, as more government services go online, it's important that people can actually avail of them, and that's where we come in in terms of delivering training. Um, we would work directly with disadvantaged communities and individuals to engage in digital inclusion. Um, we deliver OCN level courses. Um, we've got level one and level two in, in computer essentials. Um, we provide IT equipment and we pr um, signpost again to other community organizations that are delivering on the ground. Um, that's just a little bit about that. The project that I really want to talk to you about today is um, a project that I recently delivered called Bridging the Div Digital Divide. Um, and that's because not everyone who is digitally excluded is somebody that's going to sign up to an OCM level course. <laughs> In fact, <laughs> these people are probably definitely not going to sign up to a computer course. The very word computer puts them off. Um, we recently, as I said, completed this year-long project where we developed a new model of engagement to help those who are very unlikely to ever go online. Um, and we targeted people with uh, various health problems to effectively make use of the internet using a bit of special software on tablet computers. Um, as I said, this is called the Bridgital, Bridging the Digital Divide Project. It was delivered in partnership with Clan Mill Housing and with support from Go On and I. The project worked with two different groups of people. We had a group in Balamina of older people living in an independent living scheme who all had various different health concerns. Um, and we had worked with a group of women here just in the neighborhood at Mullen Mews um, who had dementia. Uh, the project piloted the use of breezy tablets in Northern Ireland, um, which are regular Samsung tablets, but they have special software on them, uh, which enables people to get online in a way that doesn't scare them. It doesn't say email, it says write to, <laughs> that sort of thing. The project demonstrated all the benefits of going online while reducing those barriers, those fears of doing the wrong thing, of hitting the wrong button, can't be done. And it really personalized and simplified the process of using communication tools, social media, and, and applications. We found things that were of interest to each person and put them on their tablet. So they said, oh, look what's new for me today. And we were really fortunate that the nature of the project uh, let, it, let us grow it organically. Um, we weren't constrained by a lot of uh, outcomes and <laughs> targets that we had to hit, which let us kind of play around. Um, 
the learning was really directed by the project coordinator, that was myself, and the groups that were involved. And we targeted the course to each person's interests, as I said, and that removes that motivation barrier. If you find the hook that makes someone interested, and again, it is usually Skyping the grandkids or something like that, that's gonna get someone interested, and if they can do it straight away without a lot of learning to get to it, that's what gets people involved. And the two different groups that we had actually made for a useful comparison, again, between trying to teach someone digital skills for the group up in uh, Gluten House and just seeing how engaging with technology could improve your well-being for the women with dementia and women needs. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, again, I have so many stories. I'm <laughs> conscious of time. Okay. I, uh, am I all right? Yeah, all right. five minutes. Well, I'll skip on a little bit because I want to play a little video at the end where they kind of get to say it for themselves. Um, but we had so many great stories coming out anecdotally of how these things were improving their situations. Um, but before I get to that, just the last element of our work was the project that we're developing at the moment. Um, we're trying to find a way to use technology to enhance the community building work that we do. There's a project happening um, in West Belfast uh, where we're looking at ways not only to improve digital skills, but actually how the technology can be used to build and link <coughs> communities across the community divide in West Belfast um, and helping to train local people on the ground to deliver that kind of work. So, again, the healthy outcomes bit. It's very difficult to quantify. We did a lot of those kind of questionnaires where you answered at the beginning and at the end about how you felt about yourself and about your confidence levels and so on. But I really think that the uh, anecdotal stories tells the best examples of how it works for individual people. But far from being a dehumanizing experience, everyone found that engaging with the internet actually brought them closer to their groups together working and to their friends and families who they might not see so often. For example, using email and Skype allows people to communicate with family and friends that are not living nearby. Facebook turned out to be a huge hit, even though everybody said at the initial outset, no, I'm not using that. Now you can't get them off it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We also started a pen pal program between the two groups, and they were complete strangers, but they were using it as a way to practice their typing and their emailing, and they were starting to have chats back and forth between Ballymena and Belfast, and we actually threw a party at the end of the project where they got to meet in person. It was great fun. It was that sense of being in it together and community building that had the most impact. And so learning those new skills and actually supporting each other to learn the new skills really gave people a sense of accomplishment and self-confidence. This is Sandra. She, she'll be in the wee video that I'm going to show. Um, she had some serious health issues and she was really starting to get her down. And she tells us that taking part in this project really turned things around for her. She found new ways to engage with technology to lift her own spirits. She loves Spotify. She's made a playlist of feel-good songs that she listens to when she starts to feel a bit down. Uh, this is Maureen. Um, she was a great shutter bug in her younger years, and she loves taking pictures with her breezy tablet and posting them on Facebook. Um, and here she is saying, oh, this thing's been on all this whole time. Get rid of this. Okay. Um, yeah, she's loving Facebook. She's loving keeping up with her family and what they're up to. Doesn't want to go for me now. I've messed it up. There we go. Uh, Patricia, this is an example of how the using the tablets has really changed the interaction between the participants and their families. She's, she's got dementia, sometimes the quality of the communication and the conversation isn't that great, but when you can use it as a tool to show a video, to play a piece of music, it really brings things alive um, and you know you feel like you're actually talking about the same thing. It's been really wonderful for her and her family. Um, and finally, this is a quote. Uh, from one of the scheme coordinators at Mullen News um, just about how important it is for everyone, even people with dementia, to know what we're talking about when we say email, when we say Skype, and they do now and they feel more included in the world. So I have a short video, I might be slightly over time, <laughs> but this really I think is the best to let them say it for themselves. Hello everybody! <laughs> Welcome to the weekly freezing class. <laughs> so today, the plan is, as we discussed last time, 
Okay, learn a little bit more about Facebook. Members of this independent living scheme have been learning a lot in the past 10 weeks. Everybody's found some friends and relatives online and we've learned how to add a friend. I think it's amazing. I mean, half the group have never even switched on a computer before. So that's the kind of progress that you're seeing. They've gone from zero to where they're at today, which is just fantastic. Their self-confidence is soaring. We're going to learn how to share a photo and how to make comments on each other's photos. Everybody open? I've enjoyed it. I think the breezy system is is first class for people of my age. We've learned Facebook, we've learned to Google, which I find interesting. If you take it the breezy way, take it the easy way, you know, it's uh, <laughs> so very simple. They're listening to music. We had a quiz last night and they were Googling. <laughs> information for it. So that Are you the person who was accused of cheating? Yes, point? because I googled, yes. One <laughs> day. Okay. Learning and playing together has created new friendships. So now you're on your own page. The social aspect of getting together as a group to learn something new has been very positive. So now when you look at your page, there it is. Lovely. And no, when you go to your feed, if you're friends with Sandra, aren't you? That's learning. Ta-da! <laughs> Our wee group, like a wee family. Before that, I never come out, never joined in. And then these tablets come out. And I started pulling it and coming in and make friends with them. And they come down every week. And it's done very good. And then they feel a lot better. So now we can see each other's pictures coming through. Let's compliment one another on our fantastic photography skills. The progress has been really, really amazing. Um, actually, it's probably um, been more than I expected in such a short period of time. Those new to technology are easily drawn in because each Breezy arrives already personalized for its user. The way the Breezy product works, it literally is out of the box. It has already been customized to them. Their names are already on it and it's ready to use with their interests on it already. When they turn on the machine and it says welcome and it says their name, um, it comes preloaded with contacts of their existing family and friends. So it seems made for them. The way Breezy works with the interaction of friends and family and relatives is also a big advantage because means they're not doing that on their own and they're on a journey with people that they know, people they trust, so that's also a big help. My nephew and uh, niece are very impressed because I have them on Facebook, so I'm able to contact them. I can't believe the old aunt's doing it. <laughs> Breezy is a service with ongoing support for both carers and users. Help is only a call or an email away. If there's any difficulties, we can contact um, Breezy through email or whatever and that they're fully supported through it. So it's it's very different from having a, a piece of equipment yourself and you're maybe in your flat and you don't know how to use it and maybe family are not available or whatever to help you. So I think that's the difference. Members of the group feel they're equipping themselves for the future. I've been uh, learning how to shop online, which I think is a very good thing as well. Maybe someday if I'm not able to go out shopping on my own, on my own, I could uh, use that. This is a must because the way the government's going and the way technology is going, there be no such a thing as ringing up and trying to make an appointment at the doctor's or you know things like that. There, so I am pleased with the fact that we've had the opportunity to do this because of what the future is going to mean. Oh, come on! First, he's got to you know play the intro. Oh, God. It's just opened up so much more interest for them, and really it's fantastic to see. I would love to see it rolled out to everybody, all our tenants everywhere. I think it would be very valuable for them all. Where can I give that on my Facebook? Oh, good question. Good question. So that gives you a flavor of the project anyway. Um, I'll let them have the last word. Um, I just wanted to say there's another video if you're interested in seeing the ones that was made that was made about Mullen Muse. It's very good as well. It's on our website. Um, and that's pretty much everything I had to say. Thank you very much.